Let's head over to my buddy uh, Projet Nitrous' house. Oh, a little spicy this morning, are we? <laughs> Let's go see. He's going to put a uh, parachute on that nitrous powered Mustang, so let's go help him out. Oh, traffic's coming. I better give it some. So we're gonna go ahead and bleed out these brakes. Uh, he's got this set up here, we can adjust the pressure. And what were you telling me? You had a problem here at the Union? So this is the factory pro proportioning valve. There's a spring and a plunger in this valve and a little puck. And what happens is under normal use, it buffers, spring, uh, buffers pressure going to the front brakes until the back brakes catch up. Well, the problem is, is that when you put in a prop valve like this, you're actually cutting down the amount of pressure going to the front brakes. So with a proportioning valve with the little spring everything in there, when you hit the brakes, 
instead of it going nice and easy all the way back, what happens is since you're cutting the front brake pressure down, is it waits until it gets up to a certain point, and then it just slams the valve open. Which locks the front brake. Which at 140 miles an hour was not fun because I went from the right lane to the left lane and I didn't touch the steering wheel. <laughs> Well, he's got the new one now. He was able to slide that piece out, and basically uh, it's open just a union now, right? For all of those, I'm not plugging anybody specifically. I'm sure there's a thousand kits out there for these, but Maxim Motorsports, if you go on their website, they sell a kit, and all you do is basically you take this nut off. It's a 19-millimeter nut. You pull it out. Be careful because there's a spring behind there that's going to try and push everything out. There is a little bit of fluid that comes out of here. So what you do is, is you pull the old piece off, very carefully hold the rag underneath it or whatever and then you pull the spring out you pull the little puck piece out and you pull the plunger straight out the old piece you cannot use because it has a weep like a weep hole in it and uh because you're removing all the internals fluid will come out of here if you don't put a cap back on it and that's what this black piece is uh it was 22 bucks for maxim motorsports awesome um, so so what we're going to do now is uh, go ahead and bleed this thing out, see if we can get the pressure back up. Oh, the joys of getting into a race car. All right. Yeah, Let's see. Oh. Eeh. Oh. oh, wait. What's under there? Easiest way what to is do that? Like All right, so let me put my butt in. Eeh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Fat guy in a little car. Oh. There we go. All right. And yes, this used to be a manual. See the extra pedal? There is a clutch pedal in the car. Yeah, it used to be a five speed. Bing, bing. All right, say when, brother. You got the cap on, right? Ready? Hold. What's that? Staring at me. What's that? Almost Staring there. at me too. Alright. Oh man, we're getting pedal now. Alright. Oh yeah, felt her go down that time. For all you kids who don't know, this is a crank for a window. And what happens is when you turn this, look at that, the window goes up. And if you want it to go down, you just go the other way. That's a tech tip. You're gonna them. <laughs> but... All right, here we go. Pump, 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 pump it up. That should be good. Okay. Hold. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> that was fun. Ron Jeremy right there. <laughs> that was uh, quite the explosion. Go ahead and pump it up. That's probably pretty good, huh? It's getting there. Oh, now we're getting there. All right, there you go. One more time on this side. Oh. <laughs> I'd say we got pressure. Break clean. Man's best friend. So this is what a tuna feels like when he's trying to get out of the can. There comes Eric. He's having problems. I should probably be yelling supportive slogans at him, but I'm not gonna. And that's what we call going to the gym for a day. <laughs> Fat guy in a little car. If you're looking for a parachute, go to Motion Raceworks. That's where this one came from. And when he pops this baby, large American flag. <laughs> Haha. 
That's what I'm saying. So as I said, Motion Raceworks. That's where Brian got this parachute. He has a little tip for you guys when it comes to putting this hole in the bumper. All right, so I sat around for a little bit. I saw a bunch of uh, videos online about how to do this, and I kind of came up with my own way of doing it. Um, the bumper was off the car, but as we all know with these bumpers, they're 25, 30 years old. They distort a little bit when you put them back on there. And every time that I would mock it back up, I, w I didn't like the way that the hole was sitting. So what I figured was, there's an inch and an eighth chrome socket. Don't try and use an impact socket because it's not going to fit in here. So what I did was, imagine this hole isn't here. What I did was I slipped this in the mount all the way to the end. All right, and then I bolted the bumper back on here. And then what I did was, this was sitting out a little bit, is I took a marker and I drew a circle all the way around the mount. Then I took the bumper back off. I took an inch and five eighths hole saw and I just followed where I drew on the Sharpie around here. And as you can see, it mounts up absolutely perfectly. Um, it looks a little bit low right now because the support for the bottom of the bumper is not on it, but I promise you, once you pull it back up to where it is, oh, yeah. it slides in and out like it's cool. So Sweet. Um, just telling Eric, if you guys buy anything from Motion Raceworks, the reason I buy stuff from them is because everything they sell, they have a video for it. Um, they didn't really have a video for this bumper piece. You have to figure it out for your own. Hopefully what I just showed you will help you out. But as far as mounting the parachute, mounting the cable, routing the cable, routing the cable mount, all that stuff is included in the video. So make sure if you buy something from them, you look at the video and see how to install it. If you buy something from somebody else and they do what they normally do and they don't give you any instructions, I would go to their uh, Motion Raceworks YouTube and I'd look it up and see how close it is to what you have. Maybe you can borrow some things from it. Great advice, Brian. I'm going to go ahead and leave a link down below to Motion Raceworks for any of you guys who are working on a project and may need uh, a little bit of assistance or want to know what you're getting into before you start, you know, trying to put a parachute in or do all kinds of different stuff. So, and Dave, this is not paid. This is not anything. This is just, they're a really good company. I uh, met some of the guys when I was out there at uh, Rocky Mountain Race Week, super dudes. So yeah, go check them out for any of your race car needs. Hey, one more thing on there. See how it says 420-10? If you were gonna buy a uh, parachute for your race car, I highly suggest before you spend money to call Motion Race Works, call Team Z, call whoever, call Stroud, call RJS, wherever you're gonna buy this from, tell them what kind of car you have, Tell them how fast it's going to go and tell them how much it's going to weigh. Because the parachute for a 3,000 pound car going 850s is different than a parachute for a 2,300 pound car that goes 850s. Right. Right. Um, there's also different length leads that, you know, from the actual bridle to the parachute. Um, there's a bunch of different variables. So, like I said, Motion Race Works. I called them. I told them exactly what I wanted to do, and I don't have any issues with it. I'm, I'm sure whatever I do is going to work out just great. So make sure you call before you go ordering $400 parachutes, and make sure you get the right one for your car. Awesome. There goes Jarhead. <laughs>